Hey everybody, today's video is going to be on list, tuples, and sets. List and tuples are really sequ sequential data that is ordered that we can manipulate. And then sets is uh, unordered data with no duplicates. And we'll go over the details of what all that means. But uh, we'll probably spend most of our time talking about list. And I have a snippets code that I'll deliver uh, in the lectures folder so that you can copy uh, the snippets over and work with them to minimize all the typing. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of remind you that uh, we had done some slicing with with strings, and I'm going to start out doing some slicing with lists, and then we'll get into some of the properties of the list. So let, let's do this. Let's just copy over the snippets here. And what I've done here is I've created a list called nums list, and it ranges from zero to nine, and it's inside of brackets. So that's how you create a list as you put them inside of brackets. Below that, I've put the indexes. And so the index, uh, once again, where uh, Python is zero base, meaning that the first index in an array or list starts with zero. And then in this case, we're going up through nine. So we have 10 elements in nums list. Now, what's interesting about um, uh, Python is that you can do reverse indexing as well. And we'll show that with our, our some of our slicing that we're going to do. So let's, let's do some slicing. And I'll just type that in here of the list. So, for example, if I wanted to get the first element of uh, nums list, I can just print that out. And let's do it this way. And just to show that we're getting that first element. And I'm going to run the code. We can see that we get item 0, which corresponds to index 0. So if I want to um, get items 0 through 5, print that out and notice that what the output is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's inclusive of the first index, but is up to, but not including 5. So we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's real important to remember. And sometimes even I forget and have to go back and look at my code. So that's something to, to realize. Now, if we want to just even leave off the 0, it makes an assumption if you put in the colon that we're going to go from 0 to 5. So that returns the same, same output. What's also interesting about slicing in Python is that I can go uh, negative. So if I want to get the last the last element in the list, I can uh, use negative uh, a negative index and that will return nine, which is the corresponds to the num list value. So um, other things that you can do here is that you could go if I want to go from two to element five and once again that's we expect the output to be two, uh, three and four and not inclusive of five. We can also let's do something a little bit more interesting. We can go by uh, steps. So if I want to put steps and do this, so start with L, uh, index two, go up to index. In this case, let's change it to nine so that we'll get two, four, six, eight is our output. And we're going to go by steps of two. So there's the output. So you can see quickly that that we can go um, you know, we can step through this data. And that'll be important in some of your ap applications where you want to go maybe every third element to, uh, to analyze an array. And we'll do that later later in the course. So let's do something um, different. Let's go actually in a negative order. So if we wanted to go from 9 to 0 and negative 1, how would this work? So we're going to start with element 9 and go to 0. And we're going to step by negative 1. And so that gives the elements in reverse order. And um, notice that element zero, in this case, we said up to element zero. So that included the numbers up to index one, since it was non-inclusive of that last element. If we want to include everything, we could do that. So um, a quick overview of slicing that you can do. You can perform slicing on list. So let's talk about some of the other attributes of list. Next, let's talk about inserting appending and extending list. And uh, so we already have our nums list. And if we wanted to insert an element into the list, we can use the insert method. So we'll take our nums list and we'll use a dot insert as the method. And we want to insert that, let's say, before index one. And so we'll put it put whatever number we want between uh, index one, let's, let's put the value 99 and then we'll say insert at one and then we'll print out our nums list. 
and let's run that guy and we'll see that um, we, we got an error because it's actually the reverse order. It's index here, we call it the help, it's the index, and then it's the value after before that index, which is what we want to do is in, insert 99. So we do that, and now we see that 99 is before index 1. So there's uh, the insert method, and then there's an append method, and you'll use append quite often if you're um, appending a value to the end of a list array in your numerical type applications. So in this case, let's append at the end the value 100. And if we run this again, um, we are setting the numplets back to our original list of uh, 0 through 9, and then we're going to append to the last element 100. Um, and I left in the 1 from the insert method, so we'll have to remove that. I got the error down here. It takes only one argument, and we gave two. And so now we've added 100 to the end. Okay, so you may be attempt, you may be tempted to do something like this. Now let's talk about this. So if I said nums list equals nums list append, and let's print that out. Now that's going to give actually it prints none, and that's the return from this append value is there's no return. So if it executes properly, then it it returns. So so if you do this, then you will actually have a no error in your code. And then you'll have none as the value for nums list. So that's not what we want what we want to do. And actually, this method, the, the approach that we're taking here is called in place. So it's operating on nums list in place and then adding 100 to the original nums list uh, array. So the final thing we want to show here is let's go ahead and append that 100. And then we'll do extend it with another uh, list. So we'll add in. 101, and notice that I'm using a square bracket here to add 101, 102, and 103 to the end of the list. So this is a, not appending one value, but extending with a longer uh, list array of list values. And so we can see that that's been added to the end. So those are the methods for um, some of the methods for uh, working with list and there's another one that's very important to use which is pop so if we want to get the last value of the list we can say nums list dot pop and that will just retrieve the last value from the list so let's just go ahead and do that and then um, see what the output is for this so it should be 103 which it which it is so um, you can, there are several other methods that we could run on this. And so let's, I've got over here in my snippets, uh, a jumbled list. And what we want to do next is sort this list. Oops, let me copy that over. And I call it this list jumbled. And there's a built-in function to be able to unjumble the list. So let's take this out. And what we want to do is to be able to sort the jumbled list. And so there is a method to do that. So let's take jumbled and sort and use the sort method to be able to do that. And so we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and sort that and then it'll work on the data in place. And then let's print the jumbled values in the new list that's been sorted out. Let's do that. So we can see that it goes in ascending order from the lowest value, negative 30, to the highest value, 22. Now, what if we wanted to do that in reverse? And I can come over here in my interactive window and we can look at the the sort method closer and you can see it has a, a field called reverse is false which is the default value and what we want to do is operate uh, to 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 set it to true so that it goes in descending also it says down below that this value is done in place so that's a kind of a, uh, to help you remember that if you try to assign this to a new list then it'll return none so let's just go ahead and add, add that to our code. We will type in reverse equal true. And now when we print this, uh, print, whoops, I needed to, print, to do it in, to do it here. Reverse equal true. And then we'll, when we print it out, it'll be in descending order. So let's remove that and rerun. And we can see that it starts at the highest value and then 
and descending order all the way down to the lowest value. So um, those are even a few more methods that you can apply on list. And we haven't talked about minimum and maximum, and you can sum in some of the other things that you can do. So let me just do that real quick. And we can say min of the jumbled list, print the max of the jumbled list. And then we can even sum those values as well. Let's run this code to print out the max, min, and sum. So we do that, and we see that we got the min was negative 30, um, the max was 22, and then the sum of all the elements was 24. Uh, and there's another important method called index. So if you want to get the index of a specific element in your list, we could uh, use the index method. And in this case, we want to find negative, let's find seven, what index that that value is at, and then print that out. And we see that in our sorted list, index seven is two. So zero, one, two. So that corresponds to what we would expect. Okay, let me show you um, an important concept here that is called uh, this list have the attribute of being mutable. So let me uh, come over to the snippets and I'll copy over uh, a section of code, a snippet of code for the mutable list. So let's go back to our working environment. And if we go ahead and, pr and uh, print out the list here, but first what I want to do is I want to assign list two as equal to list one and then print out print list and then let's do this let's say list one the element zero index zero is equal to a new term new course physics and notice i'm using strings in the list now so that's totally legal to do before we were using integers now we're using strings and then if i was to print list one and then print list two what is your prediction of what the outcome is going to be? And oddly, both list one and two are the same, even though I assigned list two to equal to list one value here. So in Python, lists are objects, and a pointer, really we have a pointer to this object, so if we change one list, we're changing the other list, which is, is really counter to the way that we thought about assigning values in the past. If I say x equals two, and then I say y equals x, and then uh, I say x is equal to 1, and we were to print out x and then print out y, we would, the value for y would be 2. Let's do that. So x is 1, y is 2. So with list, you create an object, and it's a pointer to that object in memory, and if you change list 1, it also changes list 2, so they're mutable. Now, now how did, would you you set this up to keep your original list. Um, there's this idea, concept of a tuple. So um, let, let's do this. So to create a tuple, and I'll call tuple one, is equal to, and you, you use the parentheses to make a, a list, uh, to, to make a tuple. So I'll copy the elements of list one and put it into my tuple. And now what's interesting about tuples is you can't change them. They're immutable. So if I tried to say tuple two is equal to tuple one, we will get an error. Well, I didn't try to change an element. I just assigned it to tuple two. So let's do this. Tuple one uh, zero is equal to our physics value. Then we will receive an error. Tuple logic does not support item assignment. So we can't assign an, an item within the tuple a new value. So that's that's kind of uh, interesting. So if we wanted to make our original list into a tuple, we could do this. We could say tuple one is equal to tuple of list one. Now we have an original that we can refer to. And then if I say list two is equal to list one, one and then change the value of list zero uh, of list one as before 
list two is going to change, but not list not the tuple. So let's call this uh, physics again. Well, let's let's use it. Let's use uh, Latin. And so now let's let's print these things out. So let's eliminate this. We will be using list one in our tuple. So let's construct an output here to show the point. Print list one. Print list two, and then print tuple tuple one. Let's see if we can have that work the way we expected it. Okay, so list one, item zero was changed to Latin, which was also changed in list two. The tuple one retained the original uh, items from list one, and those are immutable. So that's the concept of being immutable. The, fat, the, the last topic I want to cover is sets. And the important thing to remember about sets is that they don't hold duplicates. So let me go back to my sets here and copy over a couple of things so that we can show the concepts of behind sets. So I've got my courses is equal to calculus, Latin, Spanish, and Latin. And notice that I've got curly brackets inside of these. So let's do this. Let's print out my courses and see the result. Notice that we only got Spanish, Latin, and calculus. And they're in a different order in which they appeared within the definition stage of the set. So that's an important things to remember is that a set doesn't have duplicates and it can be in any order. What you could do with sets is um, do things that are fast. Uh, because they have these attributes, you can you can um, be very efficient with analyzing sets of data to see if there's intersections and, and uh, unions. So if I want to say my courses dot intersection is a method with your courses, and let's print that out. Eliminate that, and this will basically tell what the intersection is. So we are both taking Spanish and Latin, and that's true. And then if I wanted to um, find the union of my courses with, with your courses, and let's, and that would be all the courses you and I are taking cumulative the union of the two, we can see all the courses that we're com taking combined are Spanish, Latin, Art, History, and Calculus. So these operations become very fast on list of strings especially. And then finally, I think it's important to point out that we're going to be defining uh, dictionaries in the, fa in the future which also use curly brackets. So if you want to make an empty set, then you use empty set equals set as opposed to empty set equals curly brackets. So um, that is a quick overview of list, tuples, and sets and some of their methods. Until the next time, uh, that's the end of the, the tutorial. Thank you.